You man, chaos on the MIC. I got a special guest in the building. I got an AZ veteran in the Come building. On, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Richie Evans. What's up, baby? What's up? How you feeling? Working, man. We good out here right now, man. You know, we uh we dropped a street record called Let Me Talk That Shit. You know what I mean? Banger, by the way. Man, appreciate Banger. that love. Appreciate that love. You know what I mean? And then we just actually dropped a um a record on Friday featuring my man Vito called For You. Another um, banger, another yeah, banger. It's it's heating up right now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. We out here working though. We working. Is the reception uh, good right now for those? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy because we end up dropping and let me talk that shit is just kind of like a statement street record. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, COVID kind of had, any, you know, everybody on pause, everybody was chilling. But, you know, we knew we needed something to really spark some attention and really, you know, come out the gate hard. So we dropped the let me talk that shit record and it just really kind of put everybody on full notice. Like, yo, that shit is tough. And then, like I said, we going into the spring and summer right now, man. I felt like it was only right to do something for the ladies. And my guy Vito, actually, who's on the record, uh, shout out to my man Vito. Um, his record called You Got It just went platinum last night. You know what I'm saying? Hell so yeah. I think that the timing is right. You know what I'm saying? The stars is lining up. So hopefully we can go double platinum. You know what I mean? But yeah, we you know we out here. It's getting, you know, we're getting love. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, before we dive uh, super into the history and the music, yeah. we, we can't start the show without saying R.I.P. to DMX. You know man. what I'm saying? I think this is my first show since the official news. Man, man, uh, you know, R.I.P. to X, man. He's 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 a legend for sure. People don't realize he got his five platinum albums. Man, Two man. he dropped in the same year. Same year. <laughs> like, like I tell people all the time, like, DMX will forever be in my top five. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I get it. Like, you know, everybody kind of goes through their own situations. Of course, he had some issues, you know, with some demons he was fighting. And, but, you know, him as being an artist and just his impact to the world, like, bro, like, I don't think there will ever be another person with that much love and thrive and in, 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 in just aura, you know what I'm saying, as raw and talented as he was. You know what I'm saying? That shit hit the world tough. Like the regular people, the industry. Yeah. It's crazy though the amount of people that I see like showing respect. Yeah. And uh and just like you know, you know, talking X was, about him. X is, is is damn near iconic though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, he, again, you know, he put out two multi platinum albums in the same year. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he at one point, I think outside of Jay, you know what I'm saying, but like carried like Def Jam on his back. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. yeah, it just sucks when you see all these people showing <laughs> love, and then knowing that he was, and everybody knows he's been fighting those demons. Man, and it's like, where was y'all at? Then where was these hundred million people that all want to post pictures? Yeah, and like man. Low key clout chase online. Yeah, like, where man. was y'all at when he was struggling in the streets of AZ or Scottsdale? Man, so, like every I, I, so many people got stories with him, like outside the club yeah. in Scottsdale. Like, Bro, I, I was just, you know, what I'm saying like. You know, roughly thinking, I was like, you know, DMX came to see me in the studio uh, when I was working on my my uh, project, and like I said, like he just got out of prison. Like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I met, I met X, you know, Swiss, everybody, you know what I'm saying. So I had a real respectable relationship with with the Rough Riders crew when I was signing a game in Black Wall Street. Long story short, I'm in the studio working, man, and you know, he 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 was released from prison. He came straight to the studio and he walked into my session. And hey, yo, what's up, dog? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He was super, super <laughs> animated, hype, showed a lot of love. Like you know what I'm saying, the energy was great. But I low key felt out of, out of balance because in my sessions, you know, I like I like to turn this shit up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, where the tequila at? Where the Hennessy at? Hey, hey, pour up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and when he walked in, you know, I kind of was like, you know, you know, some of the demons that he that he had, you know, prior, and you felt like, well, he's just getting out of prison. You just didn't want to. Be that guy. Be that guy to be like, yo, let's get it cracked. Yo, dog, we back. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was, I mean, he did have a drink with me. You know what I'm saying? We did go out and hang out. You know, it wasn't nothing nothing crazy. He was still somewhat, um, you know, still conformed to how the jail system worked. But, 
he was all right. But like, just, 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 just to say what, say what you was, you know, saying, I think that, um, a lot of people now realize that there's a lot more that I think that a lot of individuals could have done to maybe hear him a little bit more or maybe help him a little bit more than really what they did. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, hopefully that, you know, you know, people, you know, recognize this and, 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 and look, look, look at people who have those certain types of demons in, 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 in situations and really take heed to show a little bit more um, empathy and, and, you know, react in, in, in a more, um, how can I say it? A more helpful way. Yeah, you know? for sure. What was Swizz like? Swizz is a tycoon, man. Like, you know, I, at that time, I was still trying to get my, my feet wet in, in, in the industry a little bit. Like I said, I was freshly new, signed the game at the particular time. And, you know, I would, everything was moving so fast. You know what I'm saying? I'm meeting all these different artists. I'm meeting all these different producers. And I remember, man, you know, I come back, come back from LA, I come home and uh, game was like, hey, Swizz is out there, pull up on him. And I forgot the name of the club, but I pulled up, there was about 30, 40 rough riders out there, <laughs> Swizz out there like, yeah, yeah, that's my nephew, come over here, you know what I'm saying? And at that time, you know, you know, they, well, I had a big ass Black Wall Street chain, of course, but you know what I'm saying? Like he showed a lot of love and then, you know, once, once I got to the studio to really see how he works, it was like phenomenal. Like Swiss is like a real workaholic. He's a machine. Like he has a he has an energy and, and, and has a vibe about himself that is is a little bit different than the normal. You know what I'm saying? But but to me that just that's where you can see his 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 genius at. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Swiss was dope, man. Super dope. Hell yeah. What was the last year like for you? What was 2020 like? I, I, I talked to a lot of people about it. Right. Some people had the best year of their life. Some yeah, people yeah. had the worst year of their life. Yeah. Some people were just like, yo, it's the same shit. Well, how how was it for um, you? Slowed a lot of things down. For I, sure. I know you talked about touring. It slowed the touring down. Yeah. Fucked up the bag a little bit. A little bit. But, you know, truthfully, I think it was a transitional period for me. I think that um, it, was, it was a positive thing for sure because it made me really recognize and put a lot of life things into perspective. You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course, you know what I mean? We was dealing with a pandemic that nobody knew about, so outside of music and outside of, you know, touring, like you just wanted to make sure that your family and your friends and your surrounding was healthy. So that really slowed me down and put me on notice about that. But due to that particular time being quarantined in the house and, you know, you know, you know, living by these type of situations that was going on, it really helped me get a little bit more in tune with myself. You know what I'm saying? It really made me, you know, I, I think I kind of created some of the best music, you know what I'm saying? Um, of my entire life, um, it made me really, like I said, man, appreciate things and really not take sh certain shit within this life for granted, for sure. But um, it was probably one of my, my best. You know what I'm saying? It got me centered. It got my business right. You know, it helped me slow down and just organize everything that was in my life. So, you know, it did me justice. It did me justice. Hell yeah. So, so who is Richie Evans? Where are you from? You from AZ? I was raised in Arizona, but I was born in Philly. Gotcha. Um, my, my father was in the military. So I moved out to Arizona when I was three. Luke Luke Air Force Base, went to elementary school there, uh, went to Sunset Elementary, went to Australia, and then from there, we got stationed overseas. Um, was over there for a couple years and then came back. Well, was over there for a couple years, then we went to Aviano, Italy, and then I was stationed in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Then I ended up getting a basketball scholarship coming back out here. So, you know, we always called Phoenix home because, like, this was the area that we stayed more than, you know, one or two years at a time with. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from 87th Ave and Thomas, the west side out there, man. And, you know, my mom's out here. My uncle's out here. My family's out here. So, you know, AZ, AZ is home for sure. Oh, yeah, that's dope. So basketball was the first love or what? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I was nice. You know what I'm <laughs> so he's out here. I'm, I'm, I'm really nice. Like, you feel me? But uh, no, nah, no, nah, that was my thing, man. Like, you know, basketball was my first love. It was my outlet. It was my, you know, it was my, it was my passion. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I got to college, that's when the music aspirate well i mean i've always rapped you know what i'm saying but really taking it serious and like like professionally was when i got to college um i just 
it was like a it was like another skill set. Like I studied, you know what I'm saying? I was reading all types of books and, you know, listening to tons of music, you know what I'm saying? Listening to people's cadences and, you know, how they rapped and how their production was, you know what I mean? Like I had time to really just get a real understanding of music. And then like I said, man, I just took it fully at that particular point, man, really start creating my, my own craft and, you know, really came back up here to Phoenix to you know, I was slinging mixtapes, rapping in barbershops, hopping on every show and everything that was, you know, needed. And, and again, you know, eventually built a respectable name and really got looked at by, you know, um, the mainstream industry and got an opportunity in shop. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's dive into that. So that was in 09, right? Yeah. So yeah. at this point, you've been doing music for like how long? Shit. I would say, I mean, you know, it's about a 10, 12 year run. You know what I'm saying? Till I mean, now. Like, like till now, yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny that they say like, you know, overnight success is like ten years and blah 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 blah. But like, that's a that's a true statement. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that I've done a lot. You know, I, I had a lot of milestone accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like this year is probably going to be my biggest year thus far. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean, and 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 I'm 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 standing by that because I think that the most important thing about that is, you know, you're seeing Richie Evans in his most his most authentic self. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this is this is just me. You know what I'm saying? I do fly nigga shit all the time, and I'm nice with it. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I got I got my team, I got my surroundings, and people around me who really care and appreciate, you know, what we're doing, and it's, it's working out. That's dope. So like. So taking it seriously for a few years and then getting signed right to to Black Wall Street, right? Right, right. With the game. Right. What was that like? Like I'm sure um, it was exciting. For sure. No, that that was like, you know, one of my highest accomplishments. You know, you gotta keep in mind at that particular time there was no bigger names in the industry besides Game Fifty M. Oh, that was a good time in music, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, Game 50 Sometimes M, Sometimes I look Luda. back, I'm like, yo, I miss it. <laughs> it was insane. Game 50 and Luda and, you know, probably, you know, Outkast and Wu-Tang, you know, out, out east. But And then maybe Lil Wayne started Wayne, right after that? Yeah, or? Wayne, Wayne's Wave came shortly right after that. Right. But um, it was it was a, um, a great experience, man, for, for somebody as big as Game to come to Arizona and pick a kid up from here it was, was big. I mean, you know, he took me on a couple world tours. He gave me the opportunity. How old were you at that to, time? To stand on. Tour in the world. I was 23. Ah, I know that felt good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being it was, young, tour yeah, in the world. Yeah, bro. Like, I was Probably not paying for much. Boy, I was getting, getting to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> tour the world. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I was I was gracious and able to be in one of my favorite magazines that I always used to buy and read, the Double XL, the Source. Oh, hell yeah. Like, it was, it was a big thing. And then... um. But truthfully, reality sets sometime. Um, you know, you know, everybody's infamous for the big fifty cent and game feud or business beef or whatever you want to so call, you know, say it. But that affected everybody up under the label. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there was a lot of times where your buzz is so big but your album is being held up not because it's not finished or not because of anything that you did. You're just in a contractual obligation with somebody whose contractual obligation is being held up. And if that's being held up, it's just a domino effect. You know what I'm saying? So it was all like business. Yeah. Like back end. It wasn't like, yeah. no, like we're going to wait or out yeah. of respect. It was just like, y'all, it's tied up. It's tied up. I mean, and, 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 that's, and I, I think that people don't really get at that moment, like that's why Game and 50s Beef was so like heightened. Like people ask all the time, like, is that fake? I was like, nah. <laughs> nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I used to have to run, like I was, I was, I was, I used to have to run around with him on tour and, interviews in a bulletproof vest bro for years like and you know what i'm saying and you know I, I, of course you know what i'm saying at that age you feel like you're young and dangerous you feel me but when you think of you know when you when you think back at it that's not that's not the way you want to live your life and that's not the way that you want to um uh uh you know you know get 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 your blessings you know what i'm saying yeah. so it, it was it was much man it was much did you ever spend any time in the same room with 50 uh, so, yeah, no. So before I signed with Game, 50 had interest in me too. So that was, that was before. After that, um, 
there would be a couple times we was in the Interscope office, like it would be like a high and buy situation. Yeah. And then one day, uh, Interscope messed up and put me, me game, the whole black wall on BET. And I think they had Rod and 50 in them there that same day too. And they was over in like Lounge B. And then they had like Fat Joe and, and, and somebody in, in like C. But it was like the most tense situation ever. You know what I'm saying? It was like, bro, if one of them walk out this room and one of them walk out this room at this same time, this shit about to be a war zone. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. yeah That's I mean, crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I got one game story, but like it's not nothing crazy. But the first concert I ever went to. I actually DJed. Yeah. It was very weird DJing a hip hop concert, never being to a hip hop concert. But yeah. But I was in college. I was 19. So this must have been like 2010 or maybe even 11. But yeah, he went through Flagstaff on tour and went to the Orpheum. Was I heard that one? He had a lot of people with him. <laughs> so it was, uh, and it was mostly local openers. So, you know, J.E.? Yeah. yeah I, I was going to say, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think I do remember that show. It's a small venue. It's a small like, venue. Yeah, like a thousand people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Flagstaff, it was probably, I don't know what time of year it was, but it was probably snow on the ground. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think it was the winter for sure. <laughs> but he was two hours late. I don't know if that rings a bell. <laughs> I'm trying to I So, like, I DJed for J.E., uh, an AZ artist. Right, right, right. So, and then because none of the other uh, artists had DJ, so I ended up just DJing Doing all it. the opening sets. Yeah, yeah. And then all of our shit was over. Everybody killed it. And then literally the whole crowd waited for almost two hours for yeah. him to like show I, up. I was just about and to he say. He did the infamous kill the whole bottle on stage. Yeah. It was like the still like the end of that era, I think, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that show clearly. You're right, because I, a lot of people stayed, but a lot of people left. I remember that for sure. For sure. Yeah, that was dope. That was like, it's just all I always rem- remember because like, not because he was late, but just because that was like my first like show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so nervous and shit. Was you? Yeah, I wasn't on the mic yet. So like, I was all timid and like, they handed me the mic to host and I like ran over and gave it to J.E. Like, ran <laughs> back to the theater. Amen. It, was, it was crazy. But it was dope though. Uh, but yeah, I've always been a game fan. Game, yeah, no, he's dope, man. I, I tell people all the time, despite, you know, a lot of the you know, personal shit that you hear about him or, or street shit you, you know, hear about him. One thing that he's really, you know, solid about is he makes great bodies of music. You know what I mean? He, he makes great bodies of work. He's a real workaholic when it comes to the studio and, and, and to doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that I really commend to him is because he's really helped me, you know, create an ear. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm very, I'm very particular about what type of production I get and how it's supposed to sound. And you know what I mean? But all that stuff is, 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 is credited to him, though. You know what I'm saying? You know, being around him so much and really seeing how he arranges and puts certain things together. Like, dude is a real, real dope artist and, and, and a machine with that, for sure. Yeah, he kind of flipped the script. I follow him on Instagram for a while. And he like went like uh, for years. He's, he was like doing the runs or the hikes with people, like yeah, groups yeah. of people, like just all into fitness like, and the, shit. The, uh, the Running Canyon. Uh, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. He probably helped like a lot of people with that or inspired sure. some people, you know. Yeah, nah, he he he's on it right now. He's on a sixty days of fitness thing. Um, I think he started maybe like a week ago. I think he's like seven days in right now. But yeah, he's he's big he's big on it. I th- I think that's his that's his balance from everything that really goes on. You know what I'm saying? I think that and his kids, so for sure. Hell yeah. On a not so positive note, you ever seen him knock somebody out? <laughs> oh my god! I would not want to be. <laughs> oh, listen! I didn't, I didn't see bro. the game is real. Like, no, no, he's with, that's the thing, though. Like people ask me all the time, I'm like, bro, no, he's with all the smoke. He's with all of the smoke. You feel me? He's with all of the smoke. Is he big too? Like six four, six five? Like, yeah, he's like six five. Like yeah, yeah. Game, uh, game, he up here. <laughs> yeah, he like, bro, he's with all the smoke. Yeah. We, we, um, you know, and and that's another thing too. Is yeah, he has bodyguards and has security around him, but like. You know, he just stands on like a certain principle. Like he just feels like, what? You disrespecting me? And you start punching somebody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Game, like I said, game used to be a, a firecracker. Like for real. You know, now he's, you know, older, more more mature. It's the age. It's got to come with age time. Boy, but he, <laughs> boy, he used to get into it all the time on the road. We used to be like, all right, so are we fighting today or what are we doing? 
Because <laughs> you gotta have his back. Oh my god! It's like you can't you can't be that guy Bro, we that just sits there or runs away <laughs> at all, man. You low key got to be like with the shit even more. So now you, I'm right? Like, I'm gonna get him for you. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Like that's why everybody was so turned up around him. Was like, hey man, like everybody wanted to kind of show their loyalty. Man, I got this story. We was in London and uh, we went to radio, and these 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 guys came in, and I don't know if they wanted to autograph or a picture or something, but. Um, he was like, the one guy was like getting kind of smart and getting like like aggressive, and I can I can instantly see game. I'm like, he about to go zero to a thousand in about two seconds. <laughs> I just see it, and then dude was like, well, you don't you don't you don't you don't gotta sign it then. And game like, who the fuck you think you talking to? He was like, you nigga, bow. <laughs> so now so now we just all brawling, we all brawling in a radio station, my guy. So we're, right in a in a radio station, so. We end up going back. We do our show. So the good thing about it was when I was signing the game, I did all of his after parties because, you know, he 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 was so big at the time. He didn't do after parties. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, have Juice from New Jersey Devil do it. So we're like, fuck it. Let's go. So we go. We go to this club, bro. It's me, the DJ, one security and games manager. Mind you, we're out the country. We go to this club, and my man was like, yo, is that the dude that game punched? Dude at the door with 60 of them. 60 of them. Literally 60 of them. And he ain't looking, pointing. Like, that's them right there. And I'm sitting here like, my dog. Man, we out the country. <laughs> Our crew is at the hotel. We doing this after party. It's about to get critical in here right now. Like, so we see them start making their way to the front. So the big security Dano was like, hey, man, you know what we live by. So, you know, I and at that time, I had like the biggest black Wall Street chain besides gang. So he was like, yo, you know what time it is. Grab the bottle, <laughs> tuck the chain. Just make sure you get out this mug if they start coming for you. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, cool, 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 cool. And I'm sitting here like, yo, there's really 60 of them. <laughs> and it's about to be a movie in here. So then though, I don't know, I don't know if you ever heard, do you know, have, have you heard the name Jimmy, Jimmy Hinchman? Jimmy Rose? I, I feel like, I feel like I he have. was he was games, games manager. Um his his head manager. Um he's like notoriously known all over the world. Like just cool business dude but his 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 street ties and his 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 aura is just that big so they was like yo should, should i call jimmy should i call jimmy and i'm like what the fuck jimmy gonna do <laughs> we in london my nigga this is not new york this is not la you know we not home you know what i'm saying so he calls him dude was like hey let's just wait for like 15 minutes just stay by the security wait and i'm like wait for what like 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 what, what are we doing bruh I seen another 60 people walk in here. Dude walked up. He was like, Juice, I'm Jimmy's man. I'm rat. I was like, what's up, champ? He was like, we gonna, we gonna escort you out of here. You ain't gonna have no problems. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I'm looking like, my dog got that much power in London, my guy? He made a call. I'm and... fucking with you. You feel me? Like, yeah, I need to get that type of credibility. You feel me? But yeah, man, like, 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 fucking with game was night and day. Yeah, it used to be, it used to be some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, it used to be some shit. That's so exciting. <laughs> man. <laughs> it must have been wild just like living it, living what people want to live, like yeah. the dream, the movies. It, yeah, it was, I know it gets real at times. Yeah, I was gonna say, bro, it, it, I mean there's, there's been some there's been some times, but it was dope though. Like I said, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't take take anything back. Um it was a learning curve for me all across the board. Uh built a lot of relationships, a lot of friendships, learned, you know, a lot of music business, you know what I'm saying, as well as just you know, learning to, to hone in on, on, on my skills. It was dope. It was, dope. was that around the same time period how Rod was signed to G-Unit? Yeah, actually, he signed first. Okay, bet. Rod signed first. Because how Rod's the homie. Yeah. <coughs> we, we <clears throat> Me and Rod at first, you know what I'm saying? You know, we, I mean, we, we, we chop it now from time to time. But you know what I'm saying? I think at that time, you just had three cats from the city who was loyal to what, 
to, to, to who they were signed to and what was going on. I think truthfully that at first the industry wanted us to take on the role of game in fifties beef, you know what I mean? Because it's sold. Let's be real. Like, like, like that was a, that was a selling point. It was a real beef, but it, they made a lot of, uh, you know, it yeah, made a lot of money. We all know that drama of yeah, sales. Yeah. That's why the news exists. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think, I think at that particular time, man, we was just trying to be loyal to what we was, you know, uh, signed to in, 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 in what we represented. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there wasn't nothing, no real crazy beef, you know what I'm saying? Between me and him or anybody, but you know, he's solid though. That's dope. Uh yeah, that's uh, that's why people threw like uh, the big bro Slippy. Yeah, yeah. Slippy was DJing for yeah, yeah. For, for, for a Slippy. Shout out Slippy, man. He's solid. He's yeah, solid yeah, one too. Yeah. Um. So I know you've been in the room and and fuck with a lot of of the heavy hitters. Yeah. From like Kendrick to Nipsey yeah. to Eric. Yeah. Like. Uh, yeah. Eric Bellinger's is the homie. I haven't seen him in a couple years. Yeah, he's solid. But like. For about a year or two, I was the guy he would call when he got to town, go to the hotel, smoke oh, him out. Shit. Like I was like, yeah, him and Neiman. yeah, yeah, <laughs> I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, gotta have, I gotta have stories like that in my life. <laughs> hey, 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 Eric, Eric is one, bro. Like I, I think that people like he's one of them ones. You know what I'm saying? Like he's one of them artists who was super, super special. You know what I'm saying? Like you can just tell the energy, the vibe. And the he down to earth, thousand percent. Because I met him. He right when Out of Wonder came out, he did like a listening party. And there was only a handful of us DJs that went to Red Revolver. Right. And uh, I met him. Was like, yeah, DJ designed, do all this shit, and got his number. Yeah. And then sure enough, like the next couple of times he was in town, he'll hit me. Oh, shit. And then, uh, and one of those times I got to link with him. Was like, where you at? Called the homies up, went in there, and like, he didn't smoke. Like he started smoking sometime in between me meeting him and him coming yeah. back that time. I mean, he's a smoker now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, so it was like a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think even I started smoking too in that time. So it was like, it was like, oh shit, we finna smoke together? Yeah, type yeah, of thing? nah. So I it. went over to the hotel with a bunch of shit for him, gift package. And then I remember my homies like teaching him like how to use like a fucking bong, like, cause it was that new. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Eric, man. Eric Saligay. Yeah. Him, you know, he's smoking for real now, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Nah, he got his shit. He he got his shit together, man. Shout out my man E. <laughs> this was a while, you know. This was years ago, but yeah, he he's dope, man. You yeah. got tracks with him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a record with with Eric. You know what I'm saying? It's on the project as well. Um, you know, you know, you brought up, you know, R.I.P. to Nip. You know what I'm saying? Man, Nip, Nip was a special one, man. You know he's like I mean? my top five, top three. Like I, he, that last album really did a lot. He was, you know. Nip was one of them people who was so far ahead of his time. I'm glad the world finally was able to catch up to witness it. You know, you know, I, I kind of put Kendrick in that in that same scenario. You know what I'm saying? Like when I signed with Game and I moved to LA, um, you know, I, I had to create my own friends and my own. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that was my circle. You know what I'm saying? Me, Kendrick, J Rock, uh, Ab. You know what I'm saying? New Jersey Devil. Like, these were all of us were just... Savages. Trying to figure it out. So, at that time, pre-taking over the world... Right. What was that like, though? Was it just a bunch of young, hungry kids? Yeah. From the, from yeah. the hood? For, for, yeah, like, like, bro, I... You know, I... Smart I just, as shit? There's no way. Bro, Ken, Ken, so, like, it, like to, to see Kendrick be the face of hip-hop, you bar none, the face of hip-hop yeah. is a big a big deal because I was, I was there to witness and see that. Like... You know, I remember when, you know, I would go over to TDE Studios to, you know, like Top had a, had a studio and he would let me go over there and work out of it and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, we would go over there and we would have like 2020 Mad Dog and we would piece up $10 for chicken nuggets and fries. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this was pre-tour. This was pre-us moving at all. You know what I'm saying? But we just built a solid respect and friendship. You know, every time Kendrick and J-Rock and them come, same situation, they hit me up. We go eat, have a couple drinks, you know what I'm saying, and just talk about life. You know what I mean? Kendrick has always been a, a, a ahead of his time. Um, I'm glad that the world was able to catch up to him as well. Same with J-Rock. J-Rock went platinum. You know what I'm saying? So they... I mean, shit, the whole team. The whole team is just... Yeah, for real. The whole team is just out there winning, but it's super dope, man. But but like I said, Nip, Nip was special. He was, he was special, always, you know, speaking that knowledge. That real shit. Yeah, always, always. It's hard to even say woke shit because now that word has so much, like, yeah. other shit attached to it. Yeah. But that is essentially, like, 
you know, just being ahead of his time and just telling people like that real shit. Like, yo, this is the this is the real shit about money. This is the real shit about yeah. health. Like, we can't just be over here doing this, killing each other. We gotta. Man, he, he was he, he that was preacher on for it. real. He was on it, man. But but that that that, that victory lap was one. That album, man. I banged that right hand to God so much in the crib, bro. That's my record, man. That's one of those albums where you could just listen to it all the way through, and then when it starts again, all the way through, yeah. and like inspirational for sure. Like, there's yeah. some tracks on there that hit. You know, I, I think that he just finally got to a place within his life where he was centered. You know what I'm saying? And I think that you can hear that in the music that he ended up putting out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I think that a lot of the politics and a lot of the extra, you know, street curricular activities and things like that, like, he just kind of didn't give a shit no more. I mean, yeah, he still represent what he, what he rep- represented, but I just think that he just stood tall and, 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 and leaned on his belief. You know what I mean? Because you can hear it in the music. You know, I was like, man, for him to put out a record... And not, and not have like a actual radio record, and still go platinum, and still get get that embracement from from people. Like, I think that that's huge, bro. I think it's super super huge. You know what I mean? As you said, man, it was just a record that you can start it and just vibe to. You know what I'm saying? No skips. Learn something. Yeah, and just vibe to it. So on the flip side, you ever seen Nipsey smack anybody? Because <laughs> we've all nah. seen we've all seen those clips of Nipsey, uh, like someone pissing him off enough to where he has to get real. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, I ain't never seen Nip Nip do that. I mean, um, the real shit Nip Nip Nip's done for me. I was in Paramount Studios. It was like three in the morning, and I was like, I got this record from Dame Grease and Swizz. It was called Audemars, and I was like, man, I got to get Nip on this record. And um, I had my partner in the studio. I said, hey, man, call Nip and tell him to pull up on me right quick. Like I said, it's like 3 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Usually, you know, niggas is out doing what they do or they sleep or whatever. They're like, nah, you got to get with me tomorrow. But my man was like, hey, man, I'll be there in 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? My man pulled up. We had a couple drinks. And, you know, he was in the transition um, of doing this Crenshaw rollout. And, and you know, it, it was one of those conversations, man, where we got to talk about business. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I'm just... You know, he you know he was like he wasn't gonna let the industry pigeonhole him. He was like, man, you know, him and his team was gonna put a blueprint together and, and like execute. You know what I'm saying? Like he's always been on that entrepreneur mindset. You know what I mean? And it shows. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, you know, I called him at three in the morning. He pulled up. He had a drink with me. We chopped it up. Laid the verse. Pulled the cameraman in there. We talked business till six a.m. Man, and then you know went to the crib. I think that that was you know honorable. You know what I'm saying? That shit probably hit different because you actually know for sure. Nah, it, it like I mean I'm still kind of in shock about the situation. You know what I mean? Like even though it's been a little time, but I'm still kind of like it's hard to believe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like it, it's still just just to me is just kind of like you know, buddy was that special. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like man, like nah, not Nip, not Nip. Um. So when you were touring, you toured inside the country and outside the country, right? Yeah. But like a lot of, a lot of shit in the UK and stuff. Like. Yeah. You know, um, we have like a, I, I call it the Tech 9 fan base overseas. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I think Tech. It's that cult. It's that cult shit. I think <laughs> Tech and Strange did such a great, you Yo, know. Their label and their branding and oh that music and shit. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Strange uh, fan for sure. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm, I'm big on their business model. I'm, you know, I, I got a very solid relationship with Tech as well. Oh hell yeah! Like I, you know, what I'm saying, I think that their business model and how they do shit is, is like amazing. You know, what I'm saying, and, and to do it from the ground up. They knew what everybody has to learn now the hard way, which yep. is the money is in touring and merch. A thousand percent. And that's why he was never home. Yeah. You know, record amount of fucking tour days and yeah. shit. And uh, I'm sure you've been to a Tech Nine show. That yeah. shit is lit. It's the lit, energy lit. is crazy. That's how you get people to fuck with you for life you know get tattoos and shit i seen that you know i seen his interaction with his people tech was a very approachable person like you know what i'm saying like i seen like i was like bro he really really you know goes out there to touch the fans and he really has an interaction for them he really goes in there and 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 you know gets on that level you know what i'm saying and i think that that is forever honorable to, to, to a fan or like like supporter, you know what I mean? Like that goes a long way. Like I see why they always come back and they come back. Like he's, you know, gave them something to thrive on. You know what I mean? But that's how that's how the Black Wall Street fan base was overseas. So we would tour overseas 
American hip hop is lit over oh there. Oh my god, bro! I'm telling you, from London, England, Japan, Africa, no, like, bro, I've been around the world twice. Facts. That's so dope. Facts. That's so dope. I'm sure you've seen it all, like how other countries. It's like, like America is. We got it good over here for sure. Like, no, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, it does make you appreciate a lot of the things that that we do got going on over here. Um, it does make you look at life a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Um, it makes you appreciate a lot of things too. So, I mean, yeah, you, you you know, outside of just touring, you know, you do learn a lot, get to see a lot, and get to experience a lot of things that a lot of people just have no idea or clue what's going on. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I want to travel too. Is just to like, I do as much research as I can to understand the world, right. but like actually going places and seeing that shit is a whole other thing. Like, yeah, for sure. That's crazy though. Like, the fucking world tour. Where where were the lit where was like the couple of littest places like with just the biggest crowds fucking singing that shit like um it's funny because you hear them singing it like with an accent too huh? like a oh, crowd they're <laughs> like they, they have these they have these big ass <laughs> festivals you know what I'm saying and there's like thirty thousand motherfuckers like it's it's insane my dude and um that energy has got to oh feel my like, god my dude like it's 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 <laughs> bro like it, it can't even be reduplicated it's so wild but like. One of the most litest places that I've ever been, and I say this all the time, like we always have an amazing time in London. You know what I'm saying? But where they really get after it, though, my dude, like really get after it, is Ireland. Oh shit, my dog! When we go to Dublin, <laughs> Ireland, it's a movie. Like it is a motherfucking movie. That's and you so know, dope. I don't smoke, but I drink like a fish. So I'm with my people. You feel me? We oh. drink and we oh, cheers it. Yeah. Oh my god! We, you know what I mean? We we out there living life. We at the pubs getting litty. You feel me? But Ireland, <laughs> the old pub. Ireland is a motherfucker though. They 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 get they they get it cracking for real. That's dope. For real. That's dope. So a rebrand happened somewhere along the line. Yeah. From Juice to Richie Evans. Yeah. Yeah. I love branding. I love rebranding. Uh, we own an advertising company and marketing. That's what Shit. I went to school for. So, like, what 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 happened, or what was the reasoning behind the rebrand? Uh, growth. You know what I'm saying? I think that um, I think it was just experience, growth, and just wanting more. Um, I've always said this, man. I felt like game giving me the platform that that he gave me was like amazing you know what i mean i'm appreciative of it but i felt like i wanted in order for me to reach the plateau that i wanted to reach i had to stand in my own light game is such a i you know you got to keep in mind game despite everything that you know all the like I said, the beefs, the, the you know, the shit that goes on. Game is a, an iconic artist. You got to understand, he has a he has a, a a legendary album in the documentary that will go down in history as one of the best albums ever. That's that's sitting up there with the Chronic, the Illmatics, the the yeah, Reasonable yeah. Doubt. Like, I can see that. Let's let's be clear. You know what I mean? So Game created such an aura and a light about him that I felt that if I stayed up under that umbrella. I would never be able to cast my light. So, you know, I took a little time for myself, man, and fell back a little bit and really just had to re-strategize and really put my own game plan in in outline and in, in, in motion. And, you know, when you when when you think of something like that, you really have to ask yourself, are you even strong enough to walk in that light? As an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, how can I say it? It wasn't hard for me to make that decision because I felt through those years, I stood bar for bar with him on records. I stood bar for bar with Kendrick on records. I stood bar for bar with Nipsey on records. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like, you know, my general surroundings were of nothing but elite people and I was able to hold my own. You know what I'm saying? For a kid from Phoenix, Arizona to go into LA and New York and stand on his own and 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 be respected in that same type, type of circle stood for something you know what i'm saying and it built a, a confidence and it built an extra motivation in in, in 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 excuse me inside of me to keep thriving so yeah. i was just like man in order for me to really really execute and achieve the things i want to achieve you know 
little monkey turns gorilla. You gotta step out from the light, roll the dice, and stand on your own. You know what I mean? And like I said, I don't, I don't think that, you know, there was nothing more realer than my government name, Richie Evans. You know what I'm saying? My mom named me that. It's birth, it's my birth name. You know what I mean? So I stand on that. You know? Oh uh, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I feel like it, it does a lot for artists too when they do just like a, a, a brand that's like more real to them like that. Yeah. Like a name or something. And I say that all the time. I'm just like, man, you know, it's, it's just an authentic, you know, situation to self. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm not a kid no more. I'm not, I'm not 21. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, it's different. I'm on grown man business and grown man time and making high level music. And we're about to go out here and turn shit up. You know? Hell yeah. So you got the two songs out now. Yeah. Uh, let me talk that shit yeah. for you. Yeah. So these are on yeah. an album, right? Yeah, yeah. EP. Actually, I'm dropping the EP. EP first. Um, my EP is called Highly Favored. Um, scheduled for May 7th. You know what I mean? Uh, great it's body coming work. quick. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Great, <laughs> great body of work, man. I got some real heavy features on there. I, you know, I, 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 got, I got some shit. I'm very, very excited because I want people to hear the growth and I want people to see the growth. You know what I mean? And I, and I think I think people are, though. You know what I'm saying? I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from some of the videos dropping, um, especially the music. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, we, we, we working heavy. We working heavy. Have you released the features yet? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, of course, like I said, I got my man Vito on the For You record. I got Eric Ballinger on the record. I got Rick Ross on the record. Um, of course, I got Game on the record. You know what I'm saying? Hell so I yeah. got some shit, man. I've really been, you know, put, putting in my work and, 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 and pushing. That's not the kind of album you can skip over. Nah. I, I, even it's funny because it's one of the ones you just press play and let it ride, man. I got you. I got I'm you. Excited. I'm excited. Um, so now the world's opening back up a little bit. You got some, like a release party. You got some performances yeah, coming yeah, or anything yeah. like I'm, that. You know, we, right now we're working with a, with a couple of uh, booking agencies and things like that to try to set it up. Um, I am jumping on the road ASAP. Hell yeah. Um, actually, I am going to be doing a radio run as well. Like I said, for the For You record. Um, I am going to have a private listening party. You know what I'm saying? Um, one of my goals, though, for the city is um, my goal is I've always wanted to sell out the Orpheum. The one in Phoenix? In Phoenix. And for some reason, every city has like an Orpheum. Yeah. It's like a thing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that like, has an Orpheum. Yeah. Like got an Orpheum. I, I want to I sell out the Orpheum in Phoenix. And, you know, I didn't know how I was going to do it because of COVID was going on, you know what I mean? But but the whole time in the pandemic, I was just like, yo, man, when my records drop and, you know, I started moving and shaking, I was like, I'm going to go on tour in my last show. I'm going to come back and do it for the home team and we're going to do it at the Orpheum. How, how big is that? Do we know what the um, capacity I think is? The, I think the Orpheum is 1,500. Nice. You know what I'm saying? I think it's I think, I think think it's 1,500. We're going we're gonna to do it big, man. We're going to um, have <clears throat> free alcohol for the city. You know what I'm saying? Richie Evans and friends. I'm going to hit Eric Bellinger. I'm going to hit Ross. I'm going to hit Vito. I'm like, hey, man, come on. It's for the city. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call some of the, the other cats out here that I rock with. You know, um, J-Waves, Daily. You know what I'm saying? Weston. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to hit my man Futuristic. A couple other people, man. I'm going I'm to even hit Willie. You know what I'm saying? The city got to see it. You know what I'm saying? So, That'd be a solid show. Yeah, man. We, you know, I I, I want to I wanna do it. That's on my That's on my bucket list. You know what I'm saying? I want to I want to sell out the Orpheum in the city and make it a movement, for real. That's dope. Let me know if you need some DJs for that. You oh, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need all that. You need all that. <laughs> oh hell yeah! So um, let me see. What what were some of your inspirations like when you started doing this music thing? Um, and when when did you like? You say you started. Taking it serious in college, but yeah. in high school you was rapping too. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you was freestyling on the bus, you know what I'm saying, and you know, battling your partners, you know what I mean, and you know, writing, writing music. But when I got to college, man, like I said, I was, you know, away from moms and the family, you know what I'm saying. I'm in dorm rooms after basketball practice, you know, having time for me, just writing, you know what I mean. And um, I had I had a few inspirations, man. You know, of course, you know, Ice Cube was one. You know what I'm saying. I mean, I was, you know. I was a kid, you know, stealing my uncle's tapes and, you know, I'm listening to Ice Cube and, you know, shit like that. But I would say Ice Cube, uh, Game, of course, uh, T.I., of course, Nas, like, I'm very influenced by Nas. Like, that's, like, you know, my, you know, my one, you know what I'm saying? So I've had some, I've, I've had some people really, uh, influence that really helped me kind of cater my style, you know what I mean? 
That's dope. I got I almost got slapped through Facebook the other day saying that Nas was overrated. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Well, somebody yeah. posted something saying that the ether like was overrated. Stop. And I was like, <laughs> I commented. Did you I was agree like, with it? I walked well, comments and I was like, well, fucking Nas is overrated. <laughs> oh my god. I took it a step further. <laughs> Do you believe that? I I don't, I don't know. Like I come from, <laughs> I come. I haven't heard in everything. Like okay. I, ha- I haven't done my due diligence and going back and listening to everything and paying real close attention, like a real hip hop historian. So let me, I look. came up in the era where it was like before I even heard any of these artists, of like the kids at school and everybody. Right. Like you already know, it's like Pac, Biggie, Jay Z, Nas. Right, right, they, right. So it's like I always just knew that like these five were, were like were the, the top ones. before right. I even knew them. Yeah. So that's just how I feel about Nas. It's like I've always heard, right, right. but I never for myself. Figured it out, you know what I'm saying? If you had a top five, do you have a top five? And if uh, you do, who is your top five? <laughs> I gotta ask this though. For, for I'm like, gonna give you mine too though. Yeah, yeah. Like I can slack on my shit all the time. I the fucking time. suck at this question as much as I talk about hip hop. But like my top five like favorite or who I think are like the best spitters or No, you're you're like like who's your five that you fuck with? Not the not the world like that you fuck with. <laughs> uh probably like Nipsey, Tech. Okay. Uh, That's strong. E40. That's strong. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put though Pac in there. I'm a West Coast baby. And then, uh, fuck, I don't know. Ooh. It's hard because, like, when, when I'm, my favorite and who I think are the best are a little different. So, I, who's your favorite? Well, that, that's what I'm listing. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that, yeah. These are just my favorites. But all spitters, I don't know who the fifth would be. I get it. No, no, no. And I, I just wanted to know because, I mean, I'm like that too. Mine is um, Ice Cube, Nas, DMX, Game, and Wayne. Hell yeah. And, I, and, 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 I, 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 and I teeter-totter between DMX and Scarface because, I, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Yeah, I just, when I hear the, like, the everybody fucking – you know, basic top five. Yeah. I just think about people like Ice Cube, who's never on it. He's on yours, but like he's never on it. Busta Rhymes is never on it. Oh my it. god! There's just all these like and and that's then, real. And people always throw Tech Nine off, so I make it a point to put him on. Yeah, and even no, no, even no. his Tech right hand, a, even his right hand man, Chris Calico. Like yeah, yeah. these people are just bar. Like when we're talking about bar bars, yeah. fuck. I even have a T Pain mixtape where he's rapping faster than most of these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, it's no, just no. like Tech is a motherfucker. It's just like. Uh, Check this motherfucker. I, I mean, like I Twista, said, Twista. Like I don't know what I'm talking about. Is it skill E40. The whole industry yeah, sleeps on E40. E40 is like almost 50 years old. Has like 50 albums out. He's still making Smashing. music. He's making lingo. He's like, I don't know. He's a tycoon. I just I just think about other things. Uh, That's good though. But it's, it's it's hard. Like it's so hard. That's why it's such a question to like actually come up with like top fives and shit. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Should it's all like objective. Well, it's Where funny because from, I don't. You like? I don't never put Biggie and Nas in my top. I mean, uh, Biggie and Pac, uh, Biggie and Pac in my top five. But like, I, I mean, they're already who they are to me. So I, I, they're set over here. You know what I mean? But yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's just. It was always like, they're just always on there. Yeah. Like unquestionably. Yeah. So I'm just the guy online. It's like I'll question it. Yeah, no, I if nothing it. else, it'll drive the algorithm up. Shit. <laughs> my man said, man, nah, 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 my boy, but I listen to that shit religious. Like, that's dope, though. So, uh, so besides the album, what, yeah. what's coming next? Just, just the um, album, the promo. So, like I said, we got the we got the EP dropping, highly favored. Like I uh, said, the EP. That's not an album, right? EP and album, because the album's an LP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Well, so, so what it is is, man, I just think that music is changing. You know what I'm saying? I think that nowadays, that you know, you know, niggas ain't buying the twelve records and you know what i mean that's that's not it you know what i mean so we're cutting them down to you know six to eight so the ep is the shorter one exactly you know what i'm saying but um no i mean like i said we got the we got the you know two records right now let me talk that shit and fool you available on all platforms like i said man gearing up to uh jump on this road you know what i'm saying i want to get out and start touching some people and really just you know building that groundwork and you know showing that facetime um you know going on you know going on tours about to go overseas um, and then I'm coming back, actually, and then I'm going to be in Miami working on my official debut album. It's going to be produced by Cool and Dre. So, Hell yeah. Yeah, man. So, so we, you know, we really we really locked and loaded, bro. We really locked and loaded. You know what I mean? Cool and Dre, huh? Yeah, man. I, I feel like, you know, maybe it's just the hip-hop in me, but, like, I think certain producers bring that feel. Like, 
of course, you know, I want to go platinum. I want to go double platinum. Like everybody wants to sell and be successful at the craft that they do. But one thing I, I really care about is the body of work. And I think that the body of work that I want to deliver, I think that they can help me provide that. I'm big on production. I'm big on sound. I'm big on feeling. You know what I'm saying? And I think that I can, I can reach all of those things with them as well as creating a radio smash or, a, you know, a, a major single to compete with the, the Drakes and the Waynes or, you know, the, 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 the people who's out here selling millions and millions, millions, millions of records. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, shout out to Cool and Dre, though, man. When it comes to selling million of, millions of records and getting your songs on the radio, is that all just about budget and who you know? Truthfully, we, we know not, a lot of good music that yeah. hasn't done that, and yeah. then we got a lot of shitty music that has. Yeah. So I like asking people that are in the mud doing it themselves. Like that's a lot of budget, right? It, it's, it's it's a yeah. You like, got to work your records. I tell artists yeah. all the time is like like the whole Fetty Wap story. Like he pushed Trap Queen for two years yeah. before he went on the radio. Yeah, and it's like. You just got to get that project together, yeah. sounding as good as you can, and like you, you were talking it, about, it. and then just like, don't fucking stop. Push yeah. it. Throw more money behind it. Throw more ads. Whatever the yeah, fuck you got to do. Whatever you got to do to do it. Yeah. Like, and, and, and it's, it's funny that you that you say that because I just got off the, uh, a call with, with uh, my team. Um, we were just saying the same thing. Like, actually, my EP may get pushed back and not for anything negative, but it may get pushed back because the For You record right now is organically taking shape. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, shit's on XM Radio now. You know what I'm saying? I know. Oh yeah. There, Does on, that happen organically? It's on, yeah, it, it's on. It's I know. Um, it's on Hip Hop, Hip Hop Nation. You know what I'm saying? Music Choice. Like it's organically starting to really take a life of its own. I also think it's piggybacking off of Vito's record because Vito just went platinum, and I think that the that timing is perfect. Right. I think that I think the timing of that is in is 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 really a good essence too. You know what I mean? But um. As far as going platinum, but yeah, it, it comes down to budget. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you believe in, in, in your record or believe in, in any single that you got going on, lock in, and push it. Just go. Push it. You know what I'm saying? That should eventually take, you know, catch flight. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, I, I know I know a couple people, you know, Vito, for an example, he pushed You Got It a year, about a year, and it went platinum last night. Takes time. Yeah. It, but but I, I respect the fact that him and his team did that, though. Like, that's the major thing is, like, bro, to move a million records is a milestone, I think. That's a lot. You know what I mean? Like, like that's that's always been my goal. My goal is, bro, you know, I want one of these singles to hit. And we push it and we work it and we push it. And I'll be able to be like, hey, man, I hung up a platinum plaque from the city. That's my goal. People ask me, like, yo, you know, are you going to do anything at you know, after music or, or what is your, what is your, what is your bigger plan? I said, man, I, I just want to be for me in order to be accomplished within my own right. I want to hang a plaque. I can, I can, I, I will feel accomplished at that point. You know what I'm saying? And did it from the city with all odds stacked against, you know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, like one of the biggest struggles that I think us artists have from Arizona is just, you know, we're, we're just from a city that's not known like that on the musical side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we're in a good space now because I think that a lot of artists now from the city is really taking more time for their craft. They're really um, not just throwing out music anymore just to throw it, you know, throw it out. I think that now they're really starting to get in tune with the mixing and the editing and really knowing that there's a certain quality of expectation that has to be delivered to be, you know, competing on that level. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I, I, I just think that, like, you know, for for me to really say that I, I I've, I've did my job, I got to bring a plaque to the city. Hell yeah. The difference between, like, 06, 07, 08, 09, <coughs> and now right. in AZ hip hop is crazy. Yeah, for sure. The elevation is through the moon. I feel like there was probably like a handful of people maybe doing it yeah. at the right level, and then now and it's now, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I, I mean, I listen to, you know, I tap into the Arizona scene all the time to listen who's really who's really booming, and I totally I totally agree with you. Like they, there there's a lot of great quality music coming from the city right now. I think technology just caught up, made it a little easier a little to easier. make better better uh, products, which is good. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely good. good. Um, 
but obviously your energy, your budget, like all of these things will weed out certain artists from others. You know what I'm saying? Thousand percent. I don't know. Is Richie Evans the ones that finally puts A Z uh artists on a <laughs> hey, I, hey listen, I'm We keep sh- saying we just need one. Yeah, I, I listen, I'm just trying to do my part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the end of the day, man, my head down, chest is out, my prayers is high, and we working out here, man. Like I said, we got two records right now, we really pushing. We're doing some great things and we're just gonna keep keep working. I hope by the time I lift my head up, you know what I'm saying? The art, the art, the, the RIAA hits me and was like, we have a platinum plaque for you. you fucking right. Let's <laughs> run it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Those songs sounds great. And I'm excited to uh to hear the EP, man. Man, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you, man. It's been a long time coming, man. I've been trying to get on the show, man. It's comfortable in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's comfortable in here. I appreciate it. I did. I went to the Instagram. I was like, fuck, I do have old messages <laughs> from Richie. <laughs> yeah. I see. I think you hit me last year, like literally like, Right when everything shut down, yeah, I was gonna say I think because I didn't do right. interviews for like most of last year. Bro, I was I was such in a crush spot because I would so right before the pandemic, that's when I was originally gonna drop the EP. So we drop a street single, we move in. I think I mean I was I went on I went on tour with Ross, like I'm moving, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, yo, I hit my PR. I was like, man, we got to get some press. And sure enough, you know, started shooting shit out, and then. The pandemic hit. And everybody's like, "Sorry, we're not doing it. We're again. not doing nothing. We're shutting down." But then I was just like, "Well, fuck it. Let me let me go get centered and be at one with myself." Goddamn it! Let me figure this shit Spend out. Spend a little time meditating on top of oh my mountain. god, bro! Listen, I, <laughs> shit, I meditate more than a little bit these days. Hell yeah, man! I see you got the salt rock. Oh yeah. <laughs> You feel me? I got some stones up here. One of my guests just brought off uh, to ward off. You know the bad stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to get uh, currently. Heavier into meditation, for sure. Uh, fasting, and then I uh, even yoga. Nah, yeah, hey, um, I need to, I need to fast. I need to, I need to. So up crazy! I just did a whole show about it. I didn't understand how yeah. healthy it was for you. I need to fast. Um, my meditation right now is phenomenal, and and you know what's crazy is people, people don't 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 get. You know, people are like, bro, why you always want to just like separate yourself? Because I gotta rebalance. You know what I'm saying? Like when you move around all the time, you got so many different energies and meeting so many different people, and like, bro, it kind of takes its toll on you, man. If you don't really balance yourself out and and, and get in line, you know what I mean. So, I've been I've been really uh, trying to trying to stay in tune. You know what I mean and be healthy and you know get it right. Yeah, because you gotta be able to do them tours again. For real, brother. For real. <laughs> you coming to a city near you? Know that. Hell yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming through today. Yes, sir. Talking that real shit. I can't wait to see what happens next. Man, like I said, uh, everybody listening, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, um, like I said, man, make sure you get that for you available now, featuring Vito on all platforms. Uh, make sure you get get that. Let me talk that shit, and uh, stay tuned. I'll see y'all this summer, man. Talk to me. I'll talk back. Rich. Hell, hell yeah. We up. <laughs>